Hello, YouTube. And a lot has been going on in Elite Dangerous over the course of the past six weeks. 2.2.03 uh, was a major rebalancing patch for ships and weapons and also removal of commodities being required for engineering. Only materials are now required. And I can't really say anything too bad about this patch. During some of the beta releases, they were tying the effectiveness of gimbaled and turreted weapons to sensor uh, rating. If you had A-rated sensors, they would gimbal and track as they do now. Uh, but if you had more sen sensors, gimbaled and turreted weapons would take a hit. They elected not to move forward with those particular enhancements to the game, I guess after getting feedback, and they may revisit at a later time. I think that's kind of a shame. I like the idea. Maybe they just need to tweak and balance some numbers a little bit more going forward. However, today we did get information about 2.3, what it's going to include, and there's a lot of really good things as far as I'm concerned here. First up with 2.3, it's going to be beta in later in February, February 26th, I believe, off the top of my head. And probably will be in beta for a month before being released live to the servers sometime late in March, if not early April. This is great to see. A couple of the additions. One is going to be the character creator, or the commander creator, which allow us to create customized avatars. I know a lot of people are looking forward to this because now there'll be a person in the ship instead of just a ship flying around. To me, I don't really care one way or the other. Uh, it's not of paramount importance to me, but to other people, this just adds a whole new aspect of the game that they've been waiting a couple, three years for now at this point. Uh, so, to those of you who are looking forward to the Commander Creator, great. It's not a feature that I'm saying is going to be bad. I'm certainly glad that they're including it, but to me, ultimately, at the end of the day, uh, does my character, whether or not he has hair or is bald, going to really matter uh, when it comes to the performance of the ship in game? What is going to matter when it comes to the performance of the ships in game is going to be multi crew. And this is what they've written. A multi-crew. Uh, different ships will have different multi-crew capabilities, uh, basically the number of commanders. Uh, you'll be able to take up to, it looks like, two other commanders with you for... Is it... I'm just kind of reading through the list here on the forums. A commander can in directly invite players and c or can set their vessels to allow multi-crew access and activate a new looking for ship feature. I can already see some problems with this, and I'll talk about that a little bit later here. Uh, commander will also log out of their current vessel and transfer to the multi-crew vessel regardless of distance. This is great for gameplay, but I can already tell you the m emergent people are going to have an issue with this. Um, I'm going to have an issue with this because there could be some potential pitfalls with PvP balancing where, you know, okay, hey guys, I'm being interdicted, get out of your ship and join mine and man my fighters and other crew roles. So there, there are some balancing things here that I don't know if they fully configured or fully expected or, or counted for. Uh, but apparently they want it to be a very friendly drop-in, drop-out procedure. I'm not totally against that. I just want to see how it plays out first. And I understand for wanting to make it drop-in, drop-out. Uh, the people who want it to be more gamish and arcade-ish are going to be all for this feature and say, but uh, playtime should trump uh, realism. So we'll see how that plays out. Helm, gunner, and fighter con roles. A ship's owner will always take the role of helm, piloting the vessel, operating fixed and gimbaled weapons. They will also control any NPC fighter pilots. There can be t uh, up to two additional crew members. Okay, so multi-crew will be limited to three, depending on the vessel, who can perform roles to enhance the ability of the ship. Players can also simply come along for the ride with the pilot in a mentoring role. That'll be interesting to see how that comes out, if you can have more than uh, additional crew. Okay. As passengers. Well, let's see how that works. Helm also returns control over power distribution, navigation, and synthesis. Okay. All crew members are allowed to take control of... Or, the gunner role allows a crew member to take control of turreted of all the turreted weapons on the ship. They do not need to jump between turret views, however. Using a third-person interface, they can control a reticle, the, uh, a reticle that all turrets within their arc will fire or will automatically follow. 
giving them improved spatial awareness and easy control of all turreted weapons. They also have two quick slot fire buttons in addition to a normal fire group that they can customize with modules, allowing them more options for activating weapons and scanners. Furthermore, the gunner has access to advanced sensor systems that allows them 360 degree tracking arcs. This allows them to activate advanced scanners such as the kill warrant scanner and missile launchers in any direction. That could be useful. Fighter con roll lets a crew member launch and control a fighter even if the helm has already launched a fighter. This allows multi-crew ships to have up to two fighters active at a time. In addition, if the ship has enough fighters, both crew members can take the role. Okay, so you can have up to two fighters at a time, it looks like. One NPC, one controlled by a player, you control, and then a gunner. Okay, that, that could be interesting. Or you could have two fighters controlled by humans with a gunner, it looks like. Or, no. Okay, or two, con okay, the two fighters could be controlled by humans at a time. So this means there could be up to three human-controlled ships at one time. Crew members can switch roles dynamically as they see fit. The ship owner will always be the helmsman. Okay. I was hoping that you could also allow other friends to pilot your ship with risk involved. Additional multi-crew benefits and rules. In addition to standard pips at the helm control, uh, extra power distribution allows a ship to operate more effective. Okay, so each crew member has an extra pip that they can assign dynam uh, dynamically. So if you have your normal, let's say, four pips into shields and two into weapons, they could have put an additional two into weapons or an additional one into power and one into engines or two into engines. That'll be interesting, increasing its capabilities in combat. I wonder if they will also be able to do five or six to shields. Ship rebuy premiums are also reduced for each crew member. So I guess if the ship is lost, you each have to pay uh, to repair the, or to rebuy the ship. That could be interesting as well, a little bit of a risk reward. All bounty vouchers that the helmsman receives will also be duplicated for each crew member. This has been, this has been needed for a very, very long time. Uh, and I hope that also extends to wings as well, because one of the problems with wings is it basically cuts uh, the amount of money that each wingman can earn over time. And the more people you wing up with, uh, the less over time each person makes. So hopefully this fixes that problem and also is extended over to wings as well. Now this is where the other problem that I have with the current design comes in. It says any crime that the ship suffers is automatically applied to all crew members equally. But when a commander leaves or uh, ends a session, the crew will have the option of avoiding to take the crimes with them, but in doing so forfeits all credits earned. It'll be their choice. My question is, does this go along to crew members who are turret gunners, say targeting a police anaconda and then causing the entire crew to get a fine? If so, this is going to lead to a trolling. People will troll to actively join up. I'm sure the Smiling Dog crew people will sit there to invoy, uh, get into ships that have an active allow people to come in just to troll the ship owner and cause them to get bounties. Uh, I'd like to see some further clarification to see how this would work, else nobody's ever going to invite people onto the ship unless they're already friends with them. So that's kind of the major things coming in 2.3. Now what's notably absent is I think an expansion of any a gameplay mechanics to add further depth. While this is going to be interesting in changing up dynamics of gameplay, there's nothing really new here that I'm seeing from that. But then again, this could just be the initial overview, and there's a tons of new missions and other things, group missions, wing missions, stuff like that added to the game they just haven't put in there yet because they're not sure if it'll be ready in time, and they're conservatively hedging their bets, as FDEV is noted to do. But what I'm also kind of saddened to see is no exploration mechanics. Because as it, as it stands right now, I think exploration is the most po popular career choice in the game right now. And there's very little to do. There needs to be some more things added into it. Uh, maybe a mineral scanner to let you know where resources are on a planet. Then you could land, deploy eventually, hopefully some sort of mining rig or something like that. Let it mine, come back the next day, collect the resources, go to market. 
as well as, you know, maybe with all of these alien ruins and stuff like that, now that we've discovered a couple, maybe if you go in and ping your, uh, or honk your horn, it pings back and says, unknown signal source on a planet. And then you have to have a detailed surface scanner in order to get direct coordinates to a place on the surface of a planet, a point of interest. That would be one of these ancient ruins, or maybe something more sinister, maybe aliens. At any rate, it's going to be very interesting to see where this goes, and along with the continuing alien ruins and Thargoids, I mean, uh, hyperspace interdictions, uh, there's a lot of good things going on. There's still always more that could be done, but I guess that could be said about any game, and I'm, I'm looking forward to this and where things are going to be going, and hopefully the they'll start fleshing out the game more come 2.0 and into Season 3. Until next time, be sure to like and subscribe, and I will see you for the beta of 2.3 later on this month.